Mr. President, that I think that uh, we have also to tackle the problem of the Greek debt. And I think there is only one good solution in that. I have uh, yesterday read the article of Mr. Soros in, in, in the Financial Times about it, also by Oskar Fischer, I think, uh, a few days ago in, in the German press. And he is uh, saying what many people are saying, the best solution for the Greek debt is a European solution. Is Euro obligations or a European monetary fund without any cost for the European taxpayers but with a solution for the future. And I think it's also the task of this Parliament to ask to the Commission, to ask to the Council to reflect on that possibility and to go beyond the national interest of the current member states of the European Union to examine this possibility. Mr. Verhofstadt, are, Mr. Verhofstadt, are you advocating that countries which are not in the Eurozone should bail out countries which are in the Eurozone? Is that what you're advocating? Maybe it shall be necessary in the near future to bail out Britain because I have seen that the fiscal deficit of Britain is even higher than the fiscal deficit of Greece. Thank you. It is, uh, if I'm done uh, mistaking, 12.9% of GDP for the moment, uh, the fiscal deficit. So uh, I think what is the most important for the moment is that we have a credible, a credible, a credible strategy towards the Eurozone. And I'm very sure, maybe not tomorrow, after tomorrow, there comes a time where Britain shall be member of the Eurozone. Be sure. Thank you. Mr. Frank Van Necke. Thank you, Voorzitter. Thank you, President. Allow me, first of all, to ascertain that we're conducting a debate in Brussels, in Belgium, in this plenary chamber. And Belgium, without any exaggeration in the economic context, we can say is the Greece of the North. Because this country, Belgium, after Greece and after Italy, has got the third highest percent public debt in Europe in fact and in one of the reasons why that is the case is former Prime Minister Verhofstadt's contribution talking about cosmetic exercises and polishing the budget Mr. Nigel Farage since you took over we've seen Greece reduced to nothing more than a protectorate. Sir, you have no legitimacy in this job at all, and I can say with confidence that I can speak on behalf of the majority of the British people in saying, we don't know you, we don't want you, and the sooner you're put out to grass, the better. Well, as you said, Mr. President, you wouldn't like to be rude, and I, well, I, I prefer to, to, to go ahead with this statement. Mr. Nigel Farage, uh, President of the Europe of Freedom and Democracy. When we had a president, we'd see a giant global political figure. The man that would be the political leader for 500 million people. The man that would represent all of us on the world stage. The man whose job was so important that of course you're paid more than President Obama. Well I'm afraid what we got was you. And I'm sorry but after that performance earlier that you gave, and I don't want to be rude, but, but you know really you have the charisma of a damp rag and the appearance of a low grade bank clerk. And the question that I want to ask, the question that I want to ask, that we're all going to ask is, who are you? I'd never heard of you. Nobody in Europe had ever heard of you. I would like to ask you, President, who voted for you? And what mechanism? Oh, I know democracy is not popular with you lot. And what mechanism do the peoples of Europe have to remove you? Is this European democracy? Well, I, I sense, uh, I sense well, though, that you're competent and capable and dangerous. And I have no doubt that it's your intention to be the quiet assassin of European democracy and of the European nation-states. You appear to have a loathing 
for the very concept of the existence of nation states. Perhaps that's because you come from Belgium, which of course is pretty much a non-country. But since you took over, we've seen Greece reduced to nothing more than a protectorate. Sir, you have no legitimacy in this job at all, and I can say with confidence that I can speak on behalf of the majority of the British people in saying, we don't know you, we don't want you, and the sooner you're put out to grass, the better. Well, as you said, Mr. President, you wouldn't like to be rude, and I, well, I, I prefer to, to, to go ahead with uh, this statement. Uh, Mr. President, blue card, if you could. Yeah. Monsieur, Monsieur Farage. Mr. Farage, would you agree we should apply Article 9 of the Treaty? Uh, you can leave Europe by using that and then you'll be happy. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madame, Mr. Sorry. What is point of order, please? It's possible, yeah, of course. I'm very disappointed with you, President Busek. It is not acceptable that in this Parliament a group chairman not only criticises the President of the Council but calls him a wet rag. And I expect you, President, to call this person to order. It's not right that this man should be able to trample over the dignity of this House. And Joseph Doe, it's not just a case of getting or allowing the UK to uh, leave the EU. It would be better for Mr Farage to resign if the European Union and the European Parliament are such bad things in his eyes. Thank you, President. Just as I have said uh, to President Farage previously, two months ago, and today I repeat this, these type of addresses which are character assassin assassinations of individuals are inadmissible in the European Parliament and I spoke to Mr. Farage about it and I pointed, drew his attention to it. Uh, Mr. Schulz, I'd like to say that this is how I work and that's, the, that's my way of going about it. Is it personal statement? Bardzo proszę. The floor is yours. <laughs> You may not like what I say, but just consider your behaviour. You, after the Irish people in a referendum voted no, said that our group had opened by supporting the no vote, that we'd opened the door to fascism. You said that we had behaved as a group in the Parliament like Hitler and the Nazis in the Reichstag. We've been called by Danny Cohn Bendit mentally weak. You know, you know, it has to be, it can't be it one way. It is not a personal it? statement. Mr. Mr. President Farage, it is not a personal statement. I am very sorry it was not a personal statement. We must keep order and all the regulations of our parliament. Uh, the next...